The Megalodon is probably the scariest predator of all time. It grew up to three times the size of the largest great white shark ever recorded and literally feasted on whales. Its teeth alone could reach sizes of up to seven inches long. It seemed like the perfect apex predator. And yet, it went extinct. Why? How could the perfect killing machine go extinct? Is there a mysterious explanation behind its disappearance from our oceans? In this video, I'm going to dive into three reasons why. But first, let's quickly take a look at what made this shark such a unique beast. The earliest fossils of the Megalodon date back to around 20 million years ago, marking its dominance of the oceans for approximately 13 million years before it went extinct around three and a half million years ago. As the biggest shark the world has ever seen, the Megalodon belonged to a group known as mackerel sharks, which include species that you may be familiar with like the great white shark, the thresher shark, mako sharks, salmon sharks, and a lot of those animals that have that general shape. Sharks are made up of cartilage, which doesn't fossilize like bones do, so estimates of their sizes are often derived from tooth measurements. As I mentioned, their teeth got up to seven inches and looked a bit similar to modern great white teeth. I've actually been out and found megalodon teeth myself, and it's been one of the coolest uh, trips that I've done in a very long time heading out into these black water rivers in Florida to dive and find these teeth. Now this one's maybe only two and a half, three inches. Imagine this up to seven inches. I mean, that would be absolutely remarkable, but that is a big tooth from a very, very big shark. Megalodon were found across the globe, particularly in warmer waters where their prey was abundant. However, where Megalodon was present and the ocean temperature was cooler, it reflected in their size. Colder water made for larger megalodon, kind of like great white sharks. We see examples of this today with basking sharks, Greenland sharks, and some other species where in colder water, you get larger animals. These giant megalodons primarily fed on large whales, fish sirenians like uh, dugongs, manatees, and potentially even stellar sea cow, another extinct animal that we've done a video on, as well as other shark species. The megalodon filled the role of the top apex predator, helping control other species population of large ocean predators from becoming overly dominant, which could potentially disrupt the food chain and the ecological balance of the ocean. So they were a keystone species that played an important role in shaping the entire oceanic environment. Their presence also influenced evolutionary adaptations in other animals, such as changes in size, migratory patterns, diving behavior, and even swimming speed uh, of other animals to avoid encounters with the megalodon, which are pressures that would be applied over generational time, which is incredible to think about. If it weren't for the megalodon, it's possible we wouldn't have in today's world the fastest shark in the world, the mako, or the world's largest animal in history, the blue whale. So Megalodon literally shaped the future of marine environments more than we potentially give it credit for. Furthermore, the carcasses of Megalodon prey provided sustenance for smaller animals, illustrating a trickle-down effect in the food chain. They had a bite force of up to 40,000 pounds per square inch, or PSI, in comparison to humans who have 162 PSI, or maybe compared to a great white shark that has about 4,000 PSI. PSI of 4,000 is enough to cut your arm clean off with water pressure alone. That's right, now 10x that and think of what the Megalodon was truly capable of. They could literally crush through a car like the jaws of life. So that begs the question, if the Megalodon was such a perfect apex predator, well, why did it go extinct? One main reason scientists believe Megalodon went extinct was due to reduced prey. Initially, science thought the decline of the meg was due to swings in ocean temperature related to climate change. We'll get into that a bit later. However, by 2016, studies showed that the meg's global distribution was not greatly affected by warm or cold periods throughout history, indicating that climate change was not the sole factor to the demise of the meg. Instead, it is believed that the population of their favorite food source, mid-sized baleen whales, decreased and the number of its competitors, such as smaller predatory sharks, like you guessed it, the great white shark, and other ocean predators such as the orca or the mako increased, 
We'll also get into that a bit later on. But when the climate cooled during the Pleistocene era, many larger cetaceans that the Megalodon preyed upon either became extinct or adapted to new climate by decreasing in size to accommodate for colder temperatures. These smaller prey items would provide less sustenance for a larger predator such as the Meg, making survival and reproduction much more difficult for such a gigantic species. Their food source was drying up and they were already being pushed out by competitors such as large macropatorial sperm whales, which were highly predatory and better suited for climate changes, but unfortunately were also equally unprepared for the disappearance of the mid-sized baleen whales. These mammals that the megalodon liked to prey on favored colder water, which allowed them to migrate to new areas with the shift of cooling ocean temperatures, leaving the megalodon behind in its restricted, sort of more coastal, warmer seas. The availability of protected coastal nurseries likely diminished as the sea levels dropped and ocean temperatures would have changed. These nursery areas were crucial for juvenile megalodons, as we see in white sharks today, providing abundant food and shelter from larger predators. A lack of suitable nursery habitats would reduce juvenile survival rates, which would of course in turn critically impact the population of sustainability of larger adult sharks. And this is something that we have seen with fisheries across the planet, right? It doesn't really matter if you're a megalodon or a bull shark or just a little sergeant major fish. If you don't have these incredibly critical coastal nurseries, uh, for instance, like mangrove habitats, for which juvenile fish can thrive in and grow up without being predated upon, you cannot have a robust adult population. So when you go to places like Florida, where they have taken massive tracts of mangrove habitat and clear cut it for development, you are directly impacting the number of fish and species in those oceans because those coastal nurseries are so incredibly important to all the species. And when you're at the top of the food chain like the megalodon was, your reproductive rate is so low already, you don't have a ton of babies, that you really cannot adapt to losing a nursery for your juveniles. Anyway, the second reason why it's believed the megalodon went extinct is due to competition from other predators. So around this time, the earliest ancestors of modern orcas and great whites were starting to move into new habitats all over the world. The surviving baleen whales at this point saw an evolutionary trend toward gigantification, possibly attributed to cooling sea temperatures. With much of the Meg's food gone, the next best prey animals were too large to hunt in the case of large baleen whales, such as the ancestors of the blue whale. The smaller prey, such as smaller tooth whales, were too fast to hunt for the Meg and started to be preyed upon by great whites and orcas, which left the Meg outcompeted. With the large oceanic super predator niche opened up, large predatory sharks and cetaceans filled the space that was left. The earliest orcas arose in this time and are one of the most successful polar and subpolar predators in the world, feeding on fish, sharks, marine mammals, you name it. Tooth whales took up other niches as well, with the living sperm whale becoming specialized for feeding on large soft-bodied squid, while dolphin and sharks compete as the dominant piscivores. Fossil evidence shows that in areas where megalodon disappeared, white sharks began to appear in greater numbers. I assume it's the same for orcas, and as ocean temperatures cooled, there was a shift in the distribution of many marine species, including potential prey and competitors. This shift could have forced the megalodon into more direct competition with other predators in areas where it previously had little or no competition, disrupting its dominance as the apex predator. It was sort of a perfect storm of situations of out competition where the, the apex predator of the time, the megalodon, couldn't continue to thrive. This doesn't mean that a switch was flipped and the megalodon completely disappeared overnight. What would have happened was you would have had an ocean that was full of megalodons, you know, let's say hundreds of thousands roaming around looking for prey. And over generational time, one, 10, 50, 100 generations, you went from a couple hundred thousand megalodon to 10,000 megalodon to a thousand megalodon down until there were only very few megalodon left because the conditions were not conducive to the continuation of that species. We actually see this all the time. A very good example, if you will, is wolves versus coyotes. Now, when you think of North America, you think of 
the fact that we have coyotes basically throughout the entire continent, the entire landmass. Now, when there were wolves around, coyotes were restricted in their range. They weren't able to occupy as many niches and they weren't as prolific and they weren't as abundant. Now, once humans came in and started targeting wolves, persecuting wolves, wolves as the apex predator that are much smaller in family groups and just generally create less offspring, their numbers started to shrink. So in order to fill that ecological niche, coyotes began to reproduce at an alarming rate and spread out all across the country. So we've seen this when wolves are reintroduced back into ranges, coyote populations dwindle very, very quickly. But what you have with the coyote and wolf dynamic is very similar to the great white shark and the Meg dynamic. And under pressure, either of those two animals at the top of the food chain tend to collapse in population. Now, all of the previous reasons why the Meg may have gone extinct have undertones of shifting climate and ocean temperatures. Let's dig into that a little. We know that the Megalodon had become extinct by the end of the Pliocene, two and a half million years ago, when the planet entered into a phase of global cooling. As the Earth's climate cooled, ice ages began to reduce the tropical waters that the Megalodon favored, hence pushing it to new areas with more competition and less favorable prey options, like we discussed. Scientists think that up to a third of all large marine animals, including over 40% of turtles and 30% of seabirds, became extinct as temperatures cooled and the number of organisms at the base of the food chain plummeted, resulting in a domino effect going up the food chain, all the way to, of course, the Meg at the very top of the food chain. As we discussed, temperatures all over Earth fell as the Pliocene came to be. One main reason is due to a lowering of sea levels and the closing of the Central American Seaway toward the end of the Miocene. This drastically changed ocean currents, meaning that the warmer waters the Megalodon favored was not able to make it all the way to the poles and preserve a warmer global temperature. Some people today insist that the Megalodon is still alive for a bunch of very unlikely and ludicrous reasons. The Megalodon is not surviving on scraps at the bottom of the Marianas Trench or in some unknown region of the ocean. It was a coastal predator that routinely came close to shore to feed and raise their young. As cool as it may be to imagine what it would be like to still have a massive 50-foot shark roaming the oceans, sadly, we should all admit that it is gone. Anyway, it's really interesting to think about the past and these incredible gigantic ocean creatures. Hope you like this video. Do that thing, like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff, and take care.